Welcome guys to the e-commerce mini course where we'll be building the application you see on the screen, which I called mini shop. This is an application where the goal of it is just to implement a way to make a payment on an application. In this example, the purchase would be for a headphone set, as you see right here. We'll see how to implement the payment gateway on our application using the Braintree API. And so we'll conveniently be able to implement making payments with both cards and PayPal. So if I actually go here, it'll bring me to the checkout. And then we can even see that where you have an option for card and PayPal. As for the tech stack, we'll be using Django with the Django REST framework, PostgreSQL for the database and React for the front end. Then at the end, I'll have a little bonus video to show you how you could also convert the front end of the application to be server side rendered using Next.js. Now let's take a look at a diagram I put together so that we can understand the flow that will be going on in our application. So here it is. On this diagram, I split up the front end, back end, and Braintree API into different sections so that we can understand what's going on. So here I have a section for the Braintree API, here I have a section for the back end, and then here I have a section for the front end, which we're going to dive into right now. Let's first take a look at the Braintree API. To make a transaction using Braintree, all we really need is the transaction part of the API to accomplish this. There's different ways to make a transaction and you by no means need to have a customer save a payment method or create a shipping slash billing address in order to make a transaction. But in this application, I'll be doing it using these other components of the Braintree API so that you can see more of what you can do with Braintree. So because we'll be creating customers, attaching payment methods to these customers, creating addresses and making transactions, I outlined all these things in the Braintree API section along with the data that's expected to create these different components. So there's more things that you can also pass into these different components and the Braintree API reference documentation is where you can see all the different data that you can optionally pass to these components. I just picked what I thought was reasonable and that's what we see listed out on this diagram. Now, because we need to pass this data along to create these components in Braintree and because we'll have this data stored in Braintree, I also wanna make sure that my backend has appropriate models in place to help us manage what goes on in Braintree. So that's what we see right over here. Let's say if someone makes a transaction for the first time, they're going to pass their first name, email, shipping details, and their payment information in order to create a transaction. So here on the front end, we see all of that data. So the first name, email, all of their shipping details, and then their card information or PayPal if that's what they select. We're then going to take their email, search through our database, and see if this customer exists in our database. If it's the first time that they're making a payment, then they do not. So we'll create the customer in Braintree using the Braintree API. So right over here, we'll create the customer. And then if that's successful, we'll store that customer's data in our database on our backend server. So right over here. Then once we create the customer, we'll take their first name and shipping details, create an address in Braintree. And if that's successful, we'll create an address in our database that points to the customer using a foreign key. And it will be a foreign key since you can have multiple addresses pointing to a single customer. So right over here, we see this address component. So this is all the data that we'll be passing in order to create an address in Braintree. And then once that's successful, we'll create this address data inside of our database. After this, we'll create a payment method in Braintree. And if that's successful, then we'll create a payment method in our database to hold a record of that data. And in particular, we'll hold the customer ID, billing address and token, which is something you can use in Braintree to retrieve a payment method. So right over here, I have the payment method. So this is what we're gonna create in Braintree. And then we're gonna pass the customer ID, the token, which is gonna be the payment nonce, which we're gonna look at a little bit more later. And then also the billing address ID. So that's what's gonna create this payment method. And once that's successful, we're gonna create it in our database to have a record there as well. Now, in order to create this payment method in Braintree, what's required is for the front end to send what's called a payment method nonce. And in our front end, we'll be using a Braintree client implementation called Dropin UI, and it will handle this for us. The way it works is that we first request a Braintree token from our server. So our server will receive that request. Then it will communicate with the Braintree API to generate this token. Then it will send it back to our front end in a response. So first, we're going to have our front end make a request to our backend server. And then our backend server is going to make a request to get a Braintree token which then Braintree is gonna generate this token. It's gonna to give it back here. And then we're gonna send it back to our front end so that it can use it. The Braintree drop-in UI will use this client token in order to authorize the drop-in UI to load up and allow us to enter a payment method. 
Then from that, we'll extract this nonce piece of data after we put in a correct payment method on the front end, send it off to our server, and our server will then send it off to Braintree in order to create this payment method in Braintree. So that's how this flow is going to work. Once we have our payment method, the final step will be to actually process the transaction. To accomplish this, we'll be making a sale in Braintree. And to this, we'll pass the customer ID who's making the payment, the amount that is going to be paid, the payment method token, which we'll have access to after we successfully create a payment method in Braintree. Then we'll put in the shipping address ID and the billing address ID, which will both just be whatever address the user put in. I kept things more simple by not having logic for separately putting in a shipping and billing address. Then we can also pass some options, which in our case, we'll just submit one option, which will be setting submit for settlement as true, which will just mean settle the payment immediately. So here you can see all that data that I was just going through. Then once the transaction in Braintree is successful, we'll then create an order record in our database, which will just hold a few values, which will be the customer that the order is associated with, the transaction ID of the transaction, the shipping address and billing address, which will both be the same in our app to keep things simpler. And finally, the payment method that was used to make the transaction. So all that data you can see right over here. There we are. That is what we're going to be accomplishing in this application. And once you're done with this mini course, you'll know how to implement a payment gateway on any application using the Braintree API. So now let's go ahead and take a look at this application in action. So here we have the checkout page. So I can put in the first name. So I can do something like John. And here I can't input any spaces. That's just an additional little thing I added to here. And then I can put in the email. So I can do something like John. And let's say if I put a space here, you can see that that space got removed. So we get John Doe at gmail.com. It's gonna be my email. I can put in a street address. I'll just put in some dummy street address like one, two, three, four, banana crescent. And then I'll put a city. I'll do something like mango. And then the country is gonna be a drop down. And then let's say if I try to place the order right now, it's not going to let me. So we're gonna have some validation here. And then here I have to choose one of these options. I can't just have it as choose. So I'll do something like Canada. I'll put Ontario and then I'll put some zip code. All right, so now here I can select a card or PayPal. So I'll do a card and then I'll do 4242. This is one of the cards that's accepted in Braintree for the sandbox account. And then I'll put some expiration date and a CVV. And then I can place the order, which is gonna be an order for 47.99 in CAD currency. So we're gonna go ahead, click this. And there we are. Now we're redirected to the thank you page. So your order was successful and you will be notified when your item is on the way. And you can go back to the site. So there's nothing fancy going on. There's no emails being sent off, nothing like that. I just kept this application much simpler. And the only thing we're really accomplishing is making a payment. So I can go back to the site. And then I can check out the admin. So in the admin, I can see this different data that we were looking at in that diagram. So the customer, the address, the payment methods and orders. So I can take a look at the customers. So right now we have this customer of John Doe since we just created it. And then here we can see their customer ID, which is a value coming from Braintree. So this is the actual customer ID in Braintree. And we can even take a look at that. If I open up Braintree, I can go into the vault and then I can search. And then here I can see I have a customer with this ID with name John. And then here's that payment method. So back here, I can now take a look at the addresses. So here I have an address. And then these are the details of that address. And then back in Braintree, if I actually click onto this customer, here I have the addresses. And here is that address, the exact same one. Then if I click on this edit, I can also see the details. And then you can also take a look at some other stuff that you can pass to this as well. So here it is. And then we also have the payment methods. So here's the payment method with this ID. So we're not actually holding anything except for this token value, which we can use to retrieve the payment method, except for the retrieval of payment methods. That's not something we're gonna do in this application, but it's just something to mention that you can also do with Braintree. So then here we see that payment method with this token. You can click on it. You can see some more details of this payment method. And then finally, the last thing is the orders. So here we have an order with this ID. And then here I just have some basic information, which is just the transaction ID and then all the different links, such as the link to the customer, the address and the payment method. 
And then here I can actually click over here. And then I can see the transaction that was made, submitted for settlement. And then you can see when it gets settled and then it has this ID. I can click on this. And this is a transaction made by our John Doe user. All right, then the last thing I'm gonna demonstrate for this application is just a payment in PayPal. So I can go back here, click, and then I'm gonna go ahead and use our exact same account. So when I go ahead and make this payment, we're gonna find this user inside of here. So then it's gonna associate this payment with the user that's in Braintree as well. And then I'll put in a different address All right, so I have the details and then now I can click on PayPal. I can click here, it'll open up this PayPal window. Here we are, now we have to put in the login credentials. So here I have PayPal open, the sessions expire pretty quickly, so I'll have to log back in. And then I'm gonna grab this personal account. So you have a business account and a personal account. So I'm gonna copy this go back to my application, paste that in here, and then I'm just gonna grab the system generated password, go back to my application, put that in here so I can log in. And then I can select what to pay with. So I'll do it with this. And there we are, we have the payment method, and now I can just place the order. And there we are. So we're brought to the thank you page, that means that everything was successful. So now if I go back to my admin panel, if I go to customers, we still have this one customer. If I go to addresses, now we have two addresses, both that point to this customer. If I go to payment methods, now we have two payment methods. So we have our card payment method, we have our PayPal payment method, and we should have two orders. So there we are. And then if I go into Braintree, I can confirm all these things by going to the vault. I can search. So we still have this one customer. And right here, we already see these two payment methods. We have this one here and then our PayPal. Then I can click onto here. And we also have two addresses attached to this user. And then here we can also see the transactions that were made by this user. So I can click on here. And then this is our latest transaction, 47.99. And this was the one using PayPal. All right, so now before we jump into the actual project, let's just quickly take a look at some of the environment setup related things that you'll need to build this project. So first off, you're going to need Python on your system as we'll be using Django in order to create the backend of this application. So you can just search for Python in Google. You can click on this link, go to downloads, and then you can just download the latest version and go through that setup wizard. So it's relatively straightforward. Second, you will need PostgreSQL on your system as this is what we'll be using for the database. So you can search for PostgreSQL, which will bring you to this site here. So PostgreSQL.org, you can click on download, then you can click on your system. So if you're on Windows, you can click here, then you can download the installer. And then if you're on Mac, you can click here, and then you can click on this PostgreSQL.app. This is the easiest way to get PostgreSQL if you're using Mac, then you can just click on the downloads, click on this download here, and go through that setup wizard. And then another thing you can do that's optional is get PG admin. And then this will give you a visual interface to manage your databases. So if you're on Windows, this might be a nice thing. You can just search for PG admin and set that up. Then third, you're gonna need Node.js on your system. And this is because we'll be using React.js for our front end and also Next.js in our final bonus video. So you can just search for Node and then you can click on Node.js and download it on your system. So this is one approach. And then if you do it this way, I'd recommend getting the LTS version Another approach is Node Version Manager, and this is actually what I'd recommend. So if you search for Node Version Manager, you'll have two links. There's this one here, which is nvm-sh slash nvm. And then there's also this one, which is the nvm-windows. So if you're on Mac or Linux, use this one. If you're on Windows, use this one. And then you can open these up and then it'll show you the instructions to get it set up on your system. So it'll show you what you have to run inside of your terminal in order to actually get the install script and then what it'll do. And then from there you have node version manager and then you can run the commands associated with it. And then it should show the commands somewhere in here. So here we are, the usage, and then it shows you the different commands that you can run inside of here. And then on Windows, just use this one here instead. 
So the way you'd get it set up on Windows is you would just download the installer for Windows. So if you go down, here's this download the latest installer, then has the manual installation if you want that. And then you just go through that setup wizard. And then finally, the last thing you need is a code editor in order to write your code. And then for this, I highly suggest using VS Code as in my opinion, this is currently the best text editor or code editor that you can use as it has fantastic features and many useful extensions. So just search for VS Code, click on here and then download it for your system. Then as for some VS Code extensions, some that I like using is auto rename tag. And then this automatically renames paired HTML tags, which is very handy. Then there's bracket pair colorizer. And then this makes it easy to see which opening bracket corresponds to which closing bracket. And then we have ES7 React Redux, GraphQL, React Native Snippets. And then this has a lot of nice shortcuts which you can use to generate boilerplate. I don't use it too much, but it's nice to have. And then there's Prettier. And then this is a code formatter which enforces a consistent style which can keep your code nice and neat. And then there's the Python extension, which is the last one I recommend. And this one has lots of support for the Python language, has linting, debugging, code formatting, and much more. So it's extremely useful when writing Python code. So there you have it. There's the overview of the application we'll build, the environment setup, and then in the next video, we're gonna go ahead and start building this project. So I'll see you guys there.